Amen. So keep your place in Exodus chapter 2. We'll get to the story in Exodus chapter 2 in just a few minutes. But before we begin, let me just give you a little bit of uh, introduction uh, this morning. Um, I don't know if you know it, if you've looked at the invitation lately, but we are, a, we are an independent, the description of our church, Hold Fast Baptist Church, is that we are an independent, fundamental Baptist church. You say, what does that mean? It means that, you know, we're independent, meaning we're not part of a denomination. You know, we're an independent church. Yes, we have friends and we have pastor friends that we know and we, we, we feel um, we, have, we hold same doctrines with certain churches, but we're not in any denomination. We're an independent Baptist church. But the second word is really what I want to focus on this morning. We are a fundamental Baptist church. And fundamental, like people can get really complicated about what that word means, but basically what fundamental means is that we follow the tenets of the Bible, no matter what. I don't know if noticed, but the world is changing very quickly today. The world is changing, but what it means that we are fundamental is that we are unchanging. We are unchanging. We stand by the words and the doctrines of the Bible, and we do not change. That's why sometimes, you know, um, you yourselves or other people that come here and visit or whatever, they may hear the preaching at this church, and they may be like, whoa, what's that? It's because the world is changing. The world is changing and people are being influenced by the world. So when they hear the fundamentals of the Bible today, it surprises them. Because you go to other churches and they don't preach certain things. Because they, they want to change with the world to not offend certain people. So this morning, I want to talk about mothers. It's Mother's Day. Let's talk about mothers. Now, what is changing very quickly is the definition of what a mother is today. Very quickly. You know, the world's definition of what a mother is is someone who's physically had a child. I guess that would be the scientific definition of what a mother is to be. You know, she's physically had a child. She's maybe married. She's maybe not married. She's, you know, she's just an automatic hero because she has had a child physically. You know, I, was, I, I, I usually check... Um, the new, I check certain news websites um, every day or every other day, and I've kind of gotten to the point where I don't really have to read too many news articles anymore. I just check headlines and just see, like, has the world been nuked or is, are we at nuclear war? Basically, what's going on in the world? You can just read headlines. So I just went and I just read some headlines this morning, and this is a perfect example of what I want to talk about this morning. Here's two headlines that I read this morning. A headline on, on motherhood for Mother's Day. Quote, this is the headline title. God sees you mothers and is cheering you no matter where you are in your journey. Isn't this the message of churches today? That no matter what you're doing as a mother, God is cheering you. God is just applauding you because of the fact that you are a mother. Here's another one. I believe every mother is an unsung hero. You know, this is, some, this is a, the, a title of a, of a news article on Mother's Day. Look, it's just... It's a feel-good thing. They're trying to make everyone feel good no matter what is going on. The world's definition of a mother is just no matter what, a mother deserves praise and adoration. So this morning, I want to look at a different type of mother this morning. And look, I'm not trying to, if, if you listen to the sermon this morning, and you listen to the Bible this morning, and, and you say, I've raised my children, I'm not trying to beat you up this morning. What I'm trying to do is show you the fundamentals of the Bible so the young ladies in this room and the young mothers in this room can do things the right way. And that's why we always preach the Bible. This morning I want to talk about the fundamental mom this morning and what the Bible says as opposed to the world about what a mother is to be. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. So let's look at the fundamental mom this morning. If you're a mom or you want to be a mom, or you're a young lady this morning who one day will be a mom, listen carefully. The Bible is very clear on the fundamentals of motherhood, and it's very different from what we will hear today. One of the most changing things in the world today is the definition of what a mother is to be. Let's look at the fundamentals this morning, since we're a fundamental Baptist church. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. And just look at verse number 1. Look what the Bible says here. It says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments with the Lord your God commanded to teach you 
that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. So we're talking in Deuteronomy chapter 6, we're talking about the law. We're talking about the Bible. We're talking about the commands of God. Now look down a few verses where the Bible says in verse number 7, it says, and thou shalt teach them. Them meaning the commandments, the judgments, the law. And thou shalt teach them unto who? Thou shalt teach them unto thy children. And it gets much more specific about this. It says, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That means persistently, not stopping, constantly. It's just, it's persistence over time, this teaching. It's just never ending. Thou shalt teach them the laws diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. That sounds like all the time. That sounds, that sounds very diligent to me. That sounds like all day, every day. Turn to Titus chapter 2. So the Bible here is commanding. It says when you're in the house all day, every day, you're supposed to be teaching God's law to the children. Teach it to the children. Now, who should do this is the question. Who, who's there? Look at Titus chapter 2. The Bible answers this for us as well. Look at Titus chapter 2 in verse number 3. Titus chapter 2 in verse number 3. So we see there's a very strong command in Deuteronomy chapter 6 that the people are not to forget the law of God. The people are not to forget the law of God, otherwise God's going to throw them out of the land. Okay, he's going to throw them out of the land. It was always a conditional promise for the land. And he's saying, look, you want to stay in the land? You better learn, that. you better keep the laws. How are you going to keep the laws? Then God gave them actual direction how to do it. He didn't just say, hey, keep my law. He tells them specifically how to do it. Okay, he, which is a good way of teaching, by the way. You don't just say, hey, do this. You give specific directions on how to do something and how to be successful at something. Look at Titus chapter 2. So we're to teach them diligently to our children these laws, and we're to teach them all day, every day, day in, day out, in the morning to the night. Okay? Look at Titus chapter 2 and verse number 3. In thy house, it said, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. So this is talking about the roles of men and women in the church. And here it, in verse number three, it's talking about, it gets into the women. We just talked about the men. Now we're talking about the women in the church, which we're discussing this morning. It says, so the women are to be teachers of good things. Who are these, these older elderly women in the church supposed to teach? That they may teach the young women. So the older women in the church are to show, be examples for the young women. That's a great model. Teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So the Bible is saying here, look, the fundamentals of the Bible are saying that the woman, the wife, the young woman is to be at home keeping the home. Well, you won't hear that too much anymore today. This is one of the things that's changing very quickly in our country today. The fundamentalist mom is at home teaching God's never-changing law to her children. That's what the Bible is telling us. Day in, day out. Turn to Proverbs chapter 1. Day in, day out, rise up and lie down. She's just teaching this law. She's there to keep the home, take care of the home, and part of that is to fulfill Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 7, to diligently teach the children. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1. The Bible says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. You see that? You see that in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 8, the mother is the lawgiver of the home. It says, the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. The mother is the one who gives God's law to the children. Look at verse number 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. The fundamentalist mom is the lawgiver. We see an example of this also in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, go ahead and turn there. And then keep your place in Proverbs chapter 20, 31. We're going to be going back there later in the sermon. But we see another example of the mom being this 
lawgiver in the home in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, of course, the, the greatest um, chapter in the Bible for, you know, just, uh, just a summary of, of a woman and what she is supposed to be. But the context of Proverbs chapter 31, you know, it's the famous chapter of the virtuous woman. What is a virtuous woman supposed to look like? Proverbs chapter 31. But the context is a mother teaching her son of who to look for in a future wife. Look at Proverbs chapter 31, and look at verse number 1. The words of King Lemuel. Now, I believe this, this is, a, this is a, a, a nickname for King Solomon that his mother gave him. His mother is speaking to the king here. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. The prophecy meaning... These are the words of the Lord that the Lord wants you to hear. And who's teaching him? His mother is teaching him. And then look at verse number two. She says, what my son? This is his mother speaking. What my son? And what the son of my womb? And what? Look at this. The son of my vows. You know what that means? That this mother, this mother, King Solomon's mother in this case, She's talking to her son. She says, the son of my prayers. She's like, you, my, my, she is, she's teaching. She's giving the law. She's giving the prophecy to her children. She's giving the law of God to her children. And then she's praying for her children. She is, she is just intimately attached to the success of her children. Go back to Proverbs 29. What I'm trying to get you to understand is this fundamentalist mother is invested in her children. She's invested. She's teaching him. She's teaching him the law. She's giving him the law, or her the law. And then she is beseeching the Lord for this child. Turn to Proverbs chapter 21. This is the fundamentalist mom right here that we're reading about. Look, other moms today, they're, they're going another way. There's many different reasons for that. We'll talk about it later. But this morning, we're talking about the fundamental mom. The fundamental mom. I'm sorry, go back to, go back to Exodus chapter 2. We'll get to Proverbs chapter 29 in a few minutes. But we're talking this morning about the fundamentalist mom. And this morning, I want to specifically point out the sacrifices required to be a fundamentalist mom or to be a fundamental mom. Let's look at the story of Moses' mother for just a few minutes. Look at Exodus chapter 2. So, of course, the Hebrews were under this command. The midwives were under this command. They were just, they were multiplying too quickly. And Pharaoh said that all the male children that are born must be killed. So here this, this Hebrew woman, this Levite woman, she has a child and she doesn't want this child to be killed. So she hides him. Look at Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 3. This is an order from Pharaoh. If it's not followed, harm will come to you. Okay, look at Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 3. And when she could no longer, not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with, and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit that he would be done to him, to see what, what would happen to make sure somebody would get him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along the river's side, and when they saw the ark coming, and the flag, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said, Go to her, or said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the women took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. So here we see a story of how Moses' mother, she's under this command. They're, they're under this command, these midwives, to kill these children. And Moses' mother, she hides her child. So this child isn't killed. So we're looking at the, the sacrifices of the fundamental mom this morning. The first sacrifice is that a mom is willing to sacrifice her literal life for her children. Moses' mother risked her literal life for Moses. She defied Pharaoh's order, and she hid him 
you know, under a penalty of probably death in this case. But today, is that what mothers are being taught today? What about today? I mean, this is a fundamental thing, that a mother should be able to be willing to sacrifice her physical life for her child. But look, today women are told that they come first over their children. Isn't that the whole problem today? Women here, you know, even after they're pregnant with a child, they're still told, you come first. Even at the sacrifice of the life of that child. Isn't that what we're seeing today? To the extreme, I mean, yay, they're even encouraged to kill their children today. It is, look, it's just, it's like we've seen so many other times in the Bible studies that we've done in this church, the, what the world is teaching is not a little different from what the Bible says. It's the opposite. Moses' mother risked her literal life for her child. But guess what? Turn to Isaiah chapter 49. Guess what? It's bizarre. It's bizarre for a mother to want to kill her own child. That's why, by the way, that's why all these wicked organizations like Planned Parenthood and all these abortion providers, that's why they don't want mothers to know that it's a child. They play down the life that's inside the mother. They don't want, because many times, many times, pro-life groups, you know all they have to do to get someone to choose to not have an abortion? Show them an ultrasound. That's it. They don't have to do anything. They just show an ultrasound, and guess what takes over? The conscience that God gave that woman takes over. He says, oh, this is my child. Look at Isaiah 49. Look at verse 15. This is, the, this is part of a woman's conscience. It needs to be undone. It needs to be undone. Look at Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Look what the Bible says. It says, can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget yet I will not forget thee. So yet God is saying he will never forget like, like we will forget or like mothers can forget. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it's something that needs to be forgotten. That this desire for a mother to care about the life of her child, to care about the life of her child, born or unborn, that needs to be undone because God has written that in our hearts, in the hearts of of women, specifically in this case. Look at Isaiah chapter 66. It's something, and look, this is a hope of mankind right here. This is a hope of mankind that all these wicked people, they have to undo everyone's conscience. They have to undo this. As we change motherhood, as we change motherhood from the fundamentals of the Bible, this is something that people have to undo. It's automatically there already. God has given it there already. It's something that must be untaught. It must be forgotten, as the Bible says in Isaiah 49. Look at Isaiah 66, verse 13. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Again, God comparing you know, his love to that, that comfort, his comfort to that comfort that a mother gives. But the point I'm trying to make is that it is, it is a default in a woman's conscience to want to be with her child. It is a fault in a woman's conscience for a woman to comfort her child. Those things need to be undone. But they can be undone, and that's what women today are being taught. They are being taught to forget their children. They are being taught to not have to sacrifice for their children. But the fundamental mom, her life will be about sacrifice. That's the difference. Today's definition it's all about living, you know, the, today's definition for the mother today is all about living your personal life to the fullest. You know, maybe this is the whole problem with people in general, that the world is teaching everybody to live their life to the fullest, their personal life to the fullest. Hey, go live your life to the fullest. Go live your individual life to the fullest. Let me know how that works out for you. Look at all these idiots in Hollywood, all these famous people that live their life to the fullest. They're miserable. They end up, you know, committing suicide. I mean, it's just, it's, it, 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 it's wrong. And it's wrong to teach women this, to teach that this is what motherhood is supposed to be. This, this wicked feminist ideology is being taught to these kids before they even have children. It's being taught to these girls when they're in public school. It's being taught to these girls in the university system. And look, 
Even when the baby, when, when women have a baby and the baby is born, look, they continue to try to sear their conscience to tell them that this child is now somebody else's responsibility. There's entire industries built around this. From daycare to all these early childhood schools, pretty soon they're going to be putting children in school after they're out of the hospital in two weeks. You wait. But the fundamental mom, the fundamental mom, her life, her whole life is defined in the Bible as being about sacrifice. Not about this pursuit for personal pleasure in her life for every moment. Look, here's another thing that the fundamental mom needs to sacrifice with her life. Go back to, uh, go, now go to Proverbs chapter 31. The fundamental mom will sacrifice the time of her life. She, might, she, she, should also, she should be willing to sacrifice her actual life, but she should sacrifice the time in her life. Look at Proverbs chapter 31. Look, the Bible teaches us that our life, our life, in 2 Samuel chapter 14, it says our life, the time that we have in our life, is like water spilt on the ground. In James chapter 4, it says it's like a vapor that's here one minute and it's gone the next. But the fundamental mom is to give that vapor to her children, is to give that water that can't be gathered up again, by the way, to her children. Look at Proverbs chapter 31. Look at this woman. Look at this woman. We already see this as she's the lawgiver. When she to give the law? All the time. She's to be there when the children rise up, when they go down, diligently. Look at Proverbs 31.15. Look at this woman and how she spends her time. Look at Proverbs 31.15. The Bible says, she rise, this is the virtuous woman here. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Look at all the things she's doing. So she gets up while it's dark. This is not a lazy woman. She gets up while it's dark to take care of this household. She considereth a field, verse 16, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She's, she's providing food for her family. She girdeth her loins with strength. This is not a weak woman. And strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is, is good, and her candle goeth not out by what? By night. This woman gets up when it's dark, and she goes to sleep when it's dark. Reading this, you have to wonder how much sleep she gets. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and holdeth her hands to the distaff. She's making clothing. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yet she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid. She's courageous. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. Why? Because she's just not afraid of snow? No, because for her, all her household are clothed with scarlet. Because no... She's got things taken care of, this woman. This woman has gotten up early, and she goes to bed late, and she's got things handled. This is a woman that spends her time for the worthy cause, her family right here. She gives the water of her life to the care and comfort of her family, this woman. So look, the fundamental mom will sacrifice her time. You say, how much of it? It seems like all of it <laughs> right here. You say, but, but, what about, but what about her? I mean, people, people would listen to this sermon. They say, what about, what about me time? You know, what about, what about me? You know, I mean, this woman's working day in and day out, caring at home for her family, for her household. What about me time? We were at, um, I came home. Uh, Friday afternoon, and Jacob and I came back from fishing, and we, we went to Applebee's to get something to eat. And it was, it was in the afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock on Friday, and there was a group of ladies there, middle-aged ladies. You could tell they were in business suits and all this. They were working ladies. And they were, they were leaving the restaurant as we were eating, and they were drunk as you could be. And they were, they were laughing and giggling. Look, they were having a lot of fun. They were having a lot of fun. You know, they were, they were having some happiness. You could tell. And I'm sitting there going, where are your kids? Because you know they have kids. It's like, where, where are your kids right now? As but, you know, that's, that's me time. That's me time. That's, that's immediate satisfaction of the pleasures that I want. You know what you call that? That's the iniquity 
That's the reward of iniquity right there that we talked about a couple weeks ago. They're, they're engaging in that reward of iniquity. But the fundamental mom sacrifices her immediate happiness for her children, for her family, for her household. Here's another thing. On this, on this topic, she, she sacrifices her immediate happiness. Moses' mother. Go back to Exodus chapter 2. Or I could, you know, you don't have to go back there. But Moses' mother, she was literally, think about this for a second. She risked her life to hide the child, and then she gave, and she, it says, she gave him up. Why? Not because she wanted to, but because she couldn't hide him anymore. She couldn't hide him anymore. It wasn't, it wasn't something she could cover up anymore. She was literally willing to have somebody else raise the child and have him live. How happy do you think that made her? Now, obviously, it worked out in this case. Turn to 1 Kings, turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. There's another story about this in the Bible as well. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. She was literally willing to sacrifice her happiness raising her own child just so that child could live and somebody else could raise that child. She was willing to sacrifice that. Today, here's, here's what, what are mothers taught today? I, I'm sick of hearing polls like this and articles like this, but let me read this while you're turning to 1 Kings chapter 3. A recent Gallup survey found that stay-at-home moms in the United States are more likely than working moms to experience sadness and anger. 28% reported depression when they asked how they were feeling the previous day compared with 17% of the employed mothers. You see what they're trying to do here? You want to stay at home with your kids? You're just going to be depressed. You want to, you want to experience sadness and anger all the time? Look, I don't know if this poll is true, but the point is, what does it matter? What does it matter if you're more sad or more... Because look, the point is, what the Bible says about the fundamentalist mom is that it's not about her immediate happiness. It's not about what makes you happy right now. It's about doing what the Bible says. It's not relevant whether or not this poll is correct or not. I don't believe it is, and I'll get to that at the end of the sermon. But look, this woman, Moses' mother, literally gave up her own child just to save him. Even to the point of having her son become the son of some other mother. There's another story like this. Look at 1 Kings chapter 3. Look at verse 25. These are two women. These are two women that come to the king. Two women come to the king. One woman's child has died, and she stole the other woman's child. She stole the other woman's baby. And they're both saying, the child is mine. And the king needs to know like which, which one is telling the truth. Look at 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 25. So the king says, Divide the living child in two. So this mom is saying, the child's mine. This mom's saying, the child is mine. And he says, all right, take the child, divide it in half, and give, it, give half to each mother. And one woman immediately just freaks out. She freaks out. And then spake the woman whose living child was under the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. So one woman is like, no! And the other one's like, cut it in half, we'll each take half. And the king gives it to the one who knows whose mother it is. Because she was willing that somebody else would have the child to sacrifice her own happiness, that her child would live. And that's how the king knew. Why? Because it was written in her heart, that's why. Because God gave her that. And the other mother didn't have it. So the king knew, who, knew whose mother it was. So today, a fundamental mother will sacrifice for her child. She will sacrifice even her own satisfaction in her life. She will sacrifice her own happiness. She will sacrifice her own pleasure. You know, some days for the fundamental mom that we're talking about here, some days for the fundamental mom may be difficult. You know, it may not be all you know, meadows and flowers skipping through the meadows with your children, you know, during the day while your husband's out at work. You know, look, there may be days filled with turmoil. After all, I mean, think about it, because what are you doing? What are you doing? It doesn't say, I mean, the things that we're talking about that the fundamental mother is supposed to be doing 
It doesn't say skip through the meadows with your children. It says give them the law. It says correct them. Give them the law. Correct them. Repeat. I mean, that could cause stress. The fundamental mom's day might be full of spankings. It might be full of stress. It may be full of anxiety as you spank them for the seventh time in one day and you're like, am I doing this right? You're like, is this working? I think he likes spankings. Is this working? Look, there's going to be anxiety there. There's going to be more teaching, more spankings, more stress. Why aren't these kids getting it? There's going to be days like that. Is this working? Am I a good teacher? Am I, am I meant to give the law? They don't want the law. But if this resonates with you this morning, you know you're doing it right. Fundamental mom. Because the fundamental mom, you say, why? You say, how do I know that? Because the fundamental mom, your life is about sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice is love. That's the love God showed us when he sent Jesus to literally sacrifice for us. That's love. Love isn't some feeling of butterflies you get in your stomach. Love is action and it is sacrifice. And that is what the fundamental mom will have to give. You'll have to sacrifice your happiness. You might have to sacrifice your sanity at times. You might have to sacrifice you know, the immediate pleasure that you could have in your life. But wait. You say, this, this, this sounds terrible. <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's more. Because guess what? Fundamental, as I said at the beginning of the sermon, fundamental means unchanging. And the fastest thing changing today that I see is motherhood. The fastest thing that I see changing. Look, it's really the fundamental mom that is under the most attack today. Because all other mothers are changing so fast out there. For the men, I mean, for the men, being fundamental, I mean, to be honest, I mean, let's just, let's be honest. Being a fundamental man, it's not too big of a, a, a status quo change. You know, I go to work like other men go to work. I go to work and, you know, I speak different than other men. But, you know, that's, I'm not really persecuted for that. I'm not really persecuted for that. You know, how I look, how I look is not really different than how other men look. You know, I'm not really, you know, look, I, I mean, it's different than how some men look. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I'm not really under pressure to wear skinny jeans, though. I'm not really under a lot of persecution because I'm up here standing here in a, in a coat and a tie. But look, the fundamental mom, she'll look different. The fundamental mom is going to have children that look different, that dress different. With the fundamental mom, many more things stand out with the fundamental mom. How you spend your life is much different. I go to work. Other men who aren't fundamental, they don't even believe the Bible, they have no idea what it says, they also go to work. But the fundamental mom is completely different than today's mom. How she spends her time, how she spends her actual water, how she spends her vapor is completely different today. And look, it's getting worse and worse every year. In, in 1975, it was like one in ten women in married households were the breadwinner. It was a rare thing. Now it's like half. It's like 50-50. It's, it's I mean, look. And guess what? They don't like seeing the fundamental mom. Those types of moms don't like the fundamental mom. You know why? Because it, it attacks the conscience that they've been trying to cover up. It, it, try, it, it reminds them of things that they've been trying to what do they have to do? To forget, as the Bible tells us in Isaiah 49. The fundamental mom, what she teaches, completely different than today's mom. It's completely different. Homeschooling, she's teaching her children the Bible, she's the lawgiver. Oh boy, that's going to make people mad. When you start teaching your kids and spending your life teaching, giving the law to your children, 
That's going to upset people because they're trying to forget that. They're trying to cover that up. It's going to upset people. Where you go, where you don't go, what you do, standards you follow, this is all completely different for the fundamental mom. It's not so different for the fundamental dad. But my point is I'm trying to make is this. It's really the moms who are going to be under the heaviest attack today. They're the ones that are going to come under the heaviest fire because what she does, it attacks the conscience that so many others are trying to cover. That's why so many people, so many women in general, especially other women, will give the fundamental mom a hard time. And really, here's what it is. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. Really, here's the crux of it right here. Here's the true cause. We have an entire society today that has turned against the fundamental mom. And here's why. Here's why. You say, why is that? Look, there's nothing new under the sun. Here's why it is right here. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, and look at verse number 7. The Bible says, Likewise, ye husbands... Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Underline that word honor, by the way. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the what? The weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. This is talking about how your husband should treat your wife. Treat her with honor. But the Bible says here that the wife, the mother, she's the weaker vessel. Look, it doesn't say she's weak. It says she's weaker than he is. And this is why, this is why men, and if you want to know why women it is this way, you say it doesn't seem fair. This is why it is. Because Satan will always attack the women and children. That's why. Because it's the, it's the, it's the easiest way into the family. It's the easiest way to break those walls of the family. Now, the father, the fundamental dad for Father's Day, there's going to be some fire and brimstone there even though it won't be preached here. But I'll table that one for now. But the point is, it's the easiest way in. It's the easiest way to destroy the family. So she's the weaker vessel, but now go back to, go back to uh, Proverbs chapter 31. So all that to say this, ladies, you will bear the brunt of the attacks. You will bear the brunt of the attacks. It's always been this way. It always will. But here's the paradox. Here's the paradox. You say, I mean, you say, this is depressing. Thanks for a good Mother's Day sermon. You say, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to sacrifice everything, including my time, my happiness. I'm going to have a life filled with stress and anxiety and, you know, the fear of failure and all these things. And then I'm going to be attacked by everybody. Thanks a lot, Pastor. But guess what? Here's the paradox. Here's the paradox. You say, I'm going to give all my time to my family. I'm going to give everything and attacks and everything. Go to Proverbs 29. I'm sorry. But here's, here's, here's the silver lining for you. Look at Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. For the changing mom, for the mom of today, for the worldly mom, for the mom that is not a fundamental mom. Look at Proverbs 29 and verse 15. Proverbs 29. The Bible says, the rod and reproof give wisdom. But, you know how Proverbs is always, they always say one way and then they say, but if you don't do that on the other side, it's like two sides of a coin in many of the verses in Proverbs. Look at, the rod and reproof give wisdom. That's the fundamental mom. But, a child left to himself bringeth who to shame? Bringeth his mother to shame. The worldly moms, the, the not fundamental moms, the ones that have rejected this, those moms at Applebee's, they will still feel the shame. Because guess what? You don't have to believe the Bible for it to be true. You don't have to believe what the Bible says for it to play out in your life, because it will. They will still feel the shame. Many of you are not old enough. Many of you are not old enough to see kids that grow up with your kids and, and see this happen to their parents. You know, to see this actually play out and see who bears the shame, but it is the mother. Trust me. No matter what they teach women to shut off in their conscience, the Bible is always true. What awaits the mom, especially the saved mom that changes and gets away from the fundamentals, is shame. That's what awaits her. 
This is why, as a society, we're trying to remove shame. Because shame is a huge problem today. Because everybody's ashamed. You know, when I was growing up, this is why we're trying to remove shame from things like fornication, things like, you know, unnatural perversion. We're trying to just say, everything's great! It doesn't matter, you will still feel the shame. No matter what TV tells you, no matter what the media tells you, you will still feel the shame. It used to be when I was in high school and into college, if somebody's daughter or son was like living with a boyfriend or girlfriend, it was, a, it was, a, it was like a hugely shameful thing. Their parents wouldn't even admit it. Their parents wouldn't even tell people. We've removed shame from that. We remove shame from fornication. We remove shame from all sorts of different sin. It's not going to work because the shame will still be there. The parents all of a sudden become accepting of everything. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. And look, you will see it in your life. You will see it as your kids grow up and you see people with kids your age and you see this happen, you will see it. You'll see it. But for the fundamental mom, back to my point. Let's look at the paradox here. The fundamental mom, she's not changing. She's not changing. She has withstood all this. I mean, it takes some, it takes some fortitude. You're back at Proverbs 31. Go to Proverbs 31. It takes some fortitude. That's why 1 Peter chapter 3 says she's the weaker vessel. She's not, the, she's not a weak vessel. A weak vessel is not going to work here because the attacks are coming through your wall. Moms, it takes some fortitude. But say she does have that fortitude and she does have the strength. Look, this is why so many people fail, too, because it's not easy. But for the fundamental mom who sacrificed her life, who sacrificed her life over that of immediate, you know, the, the, the reward of iniquity of that immediate happiness, that immediate pleasure for herself, for that fundamental mom, look at Proverbs chapter 31 and verse number 25. Proverbs chapter 31, and look at verse number 25. The Bible says this about the virtuous woman. For that fundamental mom who did it and made the sacrifice and did not change. The Bible says strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice, look at this, in time to come. Look, because she had that strength. Because as every woman around her and every woman in the society that she's living in is changing, and she said, I am not changing. I will be the lawgiver to my children. I will correct them. I will not let them go the way that they want to go. I will teach them how they're supposed to go, and I will sacrifice the entire spilled out water of my life to do so. That takes strength, but honor follows. And in time to come, you know what time to come means? Time to come means after, after a long time in the future. You know what she will do? She will rejoice. She will rejoice. As you know, enough people in your life who have raised up children, you will see these two results. You will see these two results of shame and rejoicing. Some in shame will try to erase the shame, but you can't. Because it's here. It's here. But then you will see the woman who sacrificed all that who went through the stress and the days where she's like, I'm depressed. This isn't working. This isn't working. I'm not good at this. I can't teach this law. I can't give the law. But look, she had the strength to do that, not for one day, not for one month, but for the lives of those in her household. She will rejoice. She will rejoice. And she'll be living a joyful life. And, and those in her household, her children, and her husband will honor her because of that sacrifice that she made. That's the prize right there. Kids, let me explain this to you. I've had to explain this to my kids several times over the last few years. Kids, not many kids have a fundamental mom. You have to understand that. And kids that grow up with a fundamental mom, they will think all kids have this. All kids have moms that teach them the Bible day in and day out. All kids have this. Look, kids, most kids don't have this. Most kids are going to be fending for their own way. And look, we're going to try to go out and be a ministry 
to people that didn't have this and, and give the gospel to people who didn't have this. But kids, please understand, if you have a fundamental mom, as Proverbs chapter 31 says, she is, she is more valuable than rubies. It doesn't say she's as good as rubies. It says she's more valuable than rubies. That's one of the things that makes me the most angry about this society today is that this fundamental mom is more valuable than rubies and this world today says that it's a degrading thing. It's, it's a lie straight from Satan himself to get you to believe that staying home and following the Bible and teaching your children the Bible and the law and just and helping you know build your children and build your household through all the attacks and the garbage that you have to go through that to believe that that's a lower thing that is more valuable than all the riches in the world this mother I mean nothing makes me angrier there's no oh, I, I go to work and make get a paycheck it is my wife it is the the fundamental mom that stays home and delivers this law and does this look it is the next generation is in her hands. And most kids, most kids don't have it. So you appreciate your fundamental mom today. You appreciate the sacrifice that she gives to you every single day. That when those days when maybe the house is like chaos, you know what she's sacrificing for you? She's sacrificing that immediate happiness that the world is telling her she should go pursue. And she's doing it because she's not changing. And she's trying to teach you not to change, to be fundamental. So appreciate your fundamental mom today because it's a rare thing. And that's rare things are super valuable. Happy Mother's Day. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.